For ReZero Season 2 Episode 5, cut content from Mr. Any News, the answer to Amelia and Subaru's trial. Amelia Loki, skill issue, but I feel for her. Frozen Bond memories are so sad, and who knows exactly what happened even before Frozen Bond. So, because I'm kind of an idiot and forgot that ReZero likes to sometimes rearrange the chronology of the light novels, mm. a lot of what I covered from Episode 3 made its way into Episode 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people are kind of upset about it, but like... Is it his fault? I mean, he's just watching the episodes and then going ahead to see exactly what was adapted and, you know, fucking doing it. Like, if he's doing it on a weekly basis, it's like, is it his fault? So, allow me to apologize for making that mistake and not being more considerate of how the anime could possibly be adapted. I feel like that's impossible to know. Like, like for sure, he gave more context on stuff that shouldn't have been shown, but like... If you're covering on a weekly basis, what do you want him to do? Then just like fucking wait for the season's over and then make it like, I, 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 that's a little unreasonable. I, I'm totally fine with what Annie News did. In any case, I'll be sure to mark everything that I think could be included in a later episode as a potential spoiler. That way you Smart. can just skip past anything that you may not want to know. Smart. Anyway, let's talk about episode 30, the first step of a long journey, covering the final chapter of volume 10 of the light novel. Subaru's conversation with Akedano went on for a lot longer than what was shown. There were quite a few additional topics to the conversation that served to add a lot more depth as to why the trial itself was given, part of which provides more context as to why Amelia seems to be struggling with it so much. Why is the trial given? I don't know, but these are Echidna's trials, right? Like, who created these trials? I'm just gonna assume it's Echidna's trials. And she is just greedy for knowledge. So she wants to peek at everyone's fucking past and see what they're all about, right? I feel like this is just entertainment for Echidna. We are straight up just giving her content and she's peeking in through the past and just having fun and watching along. So much. So, if we start at the beginning, it came as a surprise to Echidna when she saw that Subaru wasn't very shocked to find her there. It was almost as if he'd known that this world was an illusion the entire time. Nice. School girl outfit. I think it's what Subaru said. Gla glazer up. But um, apparently there were some hints of a silver, sorry, white-haired girl during the episodes between mom and dad. That hints at like a kidna just like snooping around. I couldn't find it though. I mean, he actually did have his suspicions. Subaru had been taking note of various oddities with his surroundings. Ever since his commute Very to school, widened, he noticed a severe you know, lack of any foggy. human presence. Then once he finally arrived only to see that no one else was around, well, that was just an impossible situation that didn't fall within the bounds of what he would call normal. He felt that if Echidna really wanted to fool him, then she should have put more effort into the background. To him, the world was just too bare. It was as if it had been completely stripped of anything that he wasn't intended to see. Yep. So that's how he was able to piece together that he wasn't actually taken back to his own world. Now. And remembering Rem and Amelia during the conversation with dad too, right? I mean, that's a directly just like, how the fuck would I know dad and mom if I remember Amelia and Rem right now? As Subaru began to ask his questions, Akedana made it clear that the only thing she tampered from his memories was everything related to her. Even though that's what she was saying, Subaru still wasn't sure if her words could be trusted. Liar. There was no foundation of trust established between the two of them yet. Plus, it didn't help that his gut was constantly telling him not to believe her. But Probably whether shouldn't he did or didn't, didn't really matter since there was not much he could do about it anyway. In any case, Akedana began to talk more about the trial itself. Specifically about why it was that facing his past was even considered to be a trial in the first place. Someone said that Subaru cross-dressed as a girl on the first day of high school debut. I think they're mistaking it because someone else said Subaru cross-dressed as a girl on his kindergarten debut. I'm like, what the fuck? I think people are getting some wrong sources. I don't think it was high school, though. It's probably, like, preschool shit, just for fun. I don't know. The way she put it, everyone has some form of regret when it comes to their past. For sure. She saw it as human nature to live each day with that lingering feeling of regret that somehow, some way, something could have been better. Although she was very much correct, that was- Echidna herself has mentioned that, like, when she was describing herself at the tea party, she said that she has done things that she regrets a lot. It's more the pessimistic way of putting it. Subaru, on the other hand, had a more positive outlook. He liked to believe that regret leads to reflection. And yeah. reflection is what allows you to correct the mistakes of yesterday so that you can do even better today and tomorrow. Yeah, but like, 
if you were just perfect, you would never even put in your position where you would regret anything because you were already good. But that's an unfair thing to say, right? <laughs> like, no one's like that. That, too, was part of human nature. And it was the core teaching of what Akedina wanted Subaru to learn. The thing is, not every person can look at their regrets with such an optimistic attitude. Mm -hmm. Most people would only look at the negative aspects that Akedina initially spoke of. Now Most people will not even think about these negative moments because a lot of these negative moments in life that you regret, you will subconsciously hide that from your consciousness, right? You don't want to think about it. You subconsciously bury it until a day that's confronted upon you. Never to look back and try to correct what it was that led them down this path of regret in the first place. It was such a small difference in perception, yet one that made a very big difference in how people viewed their past. The fact that Subaru was able to quickly come to such a conclusion had spurred a significant level of interest from Akedina. She got extremely close to his Whoa. face then told him how the person he was yesterday is far more ignorant than the person he is now. I mean, Subaru's development recently has been unreal, right? Echidna is glazing and saying that he's way ahead of schedule on track, but he is. He just aced that trial. He, 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 he is on, but I mean, you would, if you've died over and over again due to your problems, right? And all these problems, the root cause, how it all formed is due to his past. Then yeah, after season one content, for sure, he's gonna fucking learn after just dying over and over again due to his sins. Not only that, but the person he is now also lacks in knowledge compared to the person he will be tomorrow. It was an analogy for the ensuing fact that the past is inferior to the present, and the present is inferior to the future. Hmm. Akedina was so enthralled by this subject that the more she spoke on it, the more passionate she became. Continuously overwhelming Subaru as she drew closer to the overall objective She loves this trial. shit. You see, the purpose of this first test was to see if people could perceive their past in that optimistic manner. To see if they could look back at their regrets and find some sort of answer. It didn't matter what type of answer they found, so long as they came out of this trial with a greater sense of knowledge. A knowledge that would undoubtedly help them to overcome the future. Echidna would always be there at the end of the trial to affirm that person's answer. What's Echidna doing to Amelia? Cause like... In the beginning of this shit, when Subaru first met Echidna, she said that's, so that's the root of your desires, implying she knows who Amelia is, or at least is familiar, or maybe not, and she just found it interesting that Subaru is just chasing after this half-elf girl, but if Echidna and Amelia are familiar because of that line, what is Echidna doing every time Amelia fails? Is she just saying skill issue? <laughs> is, she, is she just taunting her, just saying skill issue? You fucking suck. Really? Second time, you still fail this shit? I'll see you tomorrow. 3-0 already for me. You suck. But whether they chose to deny or accept their past was completely up to them. The only thing that mattered to her was that they were able to come to some sort of conclusion. That was the proof that showed they had based their past by overcoming the anguish and sorrow that previously shrouded it. It was until that answer could be found that anyone eligible to could take the trial as many times as needed. Yeah. All because... That's the point, right? That Roswell didn't even know, but kind of wanted to test that with Subaru and Amelia. So, okay, now we know, right? We got more data points this time. This was something that Echidna found to be very important. If not for the person taking the trial, at least for Echidna to satisfy her boundless curiosity. Ideally, she would prefer that everyone accept their past in a way similar to how Subaru did. But she wouldn't prevent someone from passing the trial just because they chose to reject it. The core of the matter was just being able to face your past head on. So you can reject it, as long as you confront it, as long as you're super based about it. It's not about accepting or rejecting. Interesting. Something that Amelia has very clearly been struggling with. She doesn't seem to want to either accept or reject her past. Instead, it's almost as if she's trying to avoid it completely. Yeah, because like, remember, Frozen Bond? That's like, not even the extent of her past. That's like what happened after the past shit and Puck found her after she froze everything and went berserk. What led up to that moment is probably so traumatic that she doesn't want anything to fucking do with it. I mean, now knowing the specifics of the trial plus the events of the Frozen Bonds OVA, yep. it makes sense that Amelia would have a very tough time facing her past. We don't know the exact specifics as to what happened to her or her people, but we do know that it's surrounded by a significant tragedy. Oh, ho, 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 these scenes, bro. Better the goose, is that you? We don't know the exact specifics of.
Right? The frozen people that Amelia most likely froze. What, what happened to her or her people? But we do know that it's surrounded. That girl right there. Elf. Elf. Pointy ear. Silver hair. I don't know if it's a half elf or an elf though. By a and then boom. Right? You saw that shit. It's surrounded by... Boom, boom. By a significant young track. goose? Young goose? I don't know. Is that a young goose? I'm not sure. I'm not too sure, but that, that frame is very it's sus. By very sus. This guy right here. I here is... You can go frame by frame with... Oh, really? Oh, my God. Thank you for letting me know that. I did not know. I didn't know you could do this frame by frame. So, like, remember how I said I didn't even know that you could drag the fucking subtitles? I didn't know you could drag the subtitles before. Now I know how to go frame by frame rather than pausing and unpausing. Thank you so much for that. That's, that takes a lot of time, but... You know, this, this, this part, right? Who is this? This is... Krush's father! Oh my god, guys, we solved the problem. Yo, it's not better to goose, because this guy's too handsome. It's gotta be Krush's brother. Krush's older brother. Krush's father. Krush's uncle. No, I think this gotta be better to goose. It's gotta be. Look at the, look at the clothing. This is cult member clothing, bro. Cult member clothing. Gender brand Krush? Krush is twin brother. <laughs> but no, I don't think the timeline makes sense. Krush is... I don't think Krush is over the age of 30. I think that she's, in, she's relatively young. It, it can't be. This is like events of the past past. Who knows exactly how far we go back, right? Like pre-Frozen Bond? Cr like timeline? This is going back way, way further away. A significant tragedy. So, it's not too unlikely to assume that she's trying to run away from her problems, much like how Subaru tried to do before. On the other hand, Subaru quickly found an answer relating both to his feelings of guilt and the trauma that stemmed from it. The thing is, it wasn't the trial that helped him to arrive at these answers. No, if it was, then the trial would have taken much longer and Akedina would have had a significantly more amusing Ooh. show. It was Amelia and Rim that really faced him, you know, answered the question of, Do you have a girl you like? Yeah, I do, father. Unfortunately for her, Subaru already seemed to have an answer with regards to how to face his painful past. One that came from a certain special someone at the time when he needed it most. It's how he was able to easily accept all the glaring faults from his past. Now, when Akedina was talking about how the world was purely made up of his memories alone, yep. she was further testing Subaru by trying to insert various thoughts of doubt ASMR. into his answer. She wanted him to second-guess the fact that the people he was talking to may not have been how his real parents may have actually reacted. <laughs> the what? It's like you're at school, and a teacher asks you a question, and you answer it. And it's correct, but the teacher's ego won't allow that to be correct, so they'll play with you and say, You sure about that? Hmm. Is that your final answer, really? <laughs> it's like, come on, stop fucking second-guessing with me, just to say if I'm right or wrong. That being said, now it was Subaru's turn to get up close and personal with Echidna. Because he was very confident in how he oh, knew his parents, head to head. he was able to proudly reaffirm that that's how they were, making Echidna a lot less overwhelming in the process. Anyway, that was pretty much it for what we missed from the trial. I feel like Roswell will be very jealous of Subaru and Echidna's relationship based on how much Roswell respects and glazes Echidna. Like, if he knew how Echidna was interacting with Subaru, I feel like he would get very jealous. But then again, I don't know about Roswell and Echidna's relationship, because all I know is that Mado's family has been, you know, they've been having ownership over this land and taking care of her graveyard. So it's like, what are they really like? Based on like, Roswell's limited lines about how he views Echidna, even correcting people to say, not the Witch of Greed, Echidna. Hmm. And since a lot of the middle events was stuff that I already covered back in episode 3, we can now fast forward all the way to the long-awaited conversation between Subaru yes, and Roswell. Yes, this shit is fucking crazy, bro. He is fucking straight up leaking at this point, saying, You're my partner in crime. This is, a con this is a fucking a conspiracy we're on together. My accomplice, you are the windfall that I have been waiting for. At the beginning, Roswell was recounting all of the feats Subaru performed while he Rental was away. Goa. Because Subaru had proven his words from the time that he declared himself to be Amelia's knight, Roswell decided that once they returned from Sanctuary that he would genuinely appoint Subaru with that prestigious title. Wait, what? No more self-proclaimed knight? Roswell has the ability to knight us? 
Yo, uh, yo, let's go. I'm down. We're gonna be officially knight, and then maybe we get even like a. Well, we can't have a white knight robe. Like, it'd be cool to be matching with Julius because he's our friend. But I want Natsuki Silver to remain in his tracksuit. It's just signature fucking neat tracksuit. By defeating both the White Whale and a witch called Archbishop, yeah. Subaru had shown that he was more than worthy of being called a knight. Bro, we just subjugated a 400- Cause like, I truly don't think people understand how crazy this feat is. Cause 14 years back, when Theresia von Austria was still alive, a sword saint leading the subjugation failed. Like, like, hello? A sword saint party failed, but this random kid succeeds? That is an insane feat. And like, <laughs> like it's, and this is just one of the feats. And then he subjugated the cult members attacking us. And then we took down an archbishop back to back. Insane feats. Though if there is a monarch, this entire kingdom should be thrown a fucking public holiday. Straight up, Natsuki Subaru, the day he freed the kingdom from the terror of the whale, should be an actual fucking holiday. This is not knight territory. It is actually transcending into heroic legends. So Roswell saw- Also, remember my, remember my theory about Theresia von Austria taking back shots from Ricardo? Not Ricardo specifically, but from, you know, fucking, uh... Uh, Beastman, because uh, Reinhardt, uh, sorry, because uh, uh, what's his name? Because Wilhelm is a terrible husband that never said I love you. And because Wilhelm received the slash from Theresia from the blessing of the Grim Reaper, now with the advent of the uh, fucking white whale subjugation, suddenly it opened back up with gluttony showing up, which now I thought about this for a second. When was the subjugation that failed 14 years ago, right? How old is the Archbishop of St. Gluttony? Lie. He's 13. Hello? Hello? Is anyone? Hello? Does this not? Huh? Huh? Like, like I'm, I'm just telling. And the Jack, the more I think about this meme theory, the more I think about this fucking meme theory, the more it starts to make sense of my delusions. But as a fitting reward. But as Roswell began to reveal why it was he refrained from participating in the battles, the I don't want to face against the witch's cult. You do it, Subaru. What the fuck would I do it? Title just didn't seem to be so prestigious anymore. Sure, becoming a knight acknowledges the purpose of the battles he fought, but knowing those battles were filled with so much regret made him feel like maybe it wasn't something worth honoring after all. Now, one key thing to note about this whole situation was that Roswell vowed to only speak the truth. If he was unable to say something, then he would say so. And if it was something Subaru wasn't yet ready to hear, then he wouldn't say it. But everything that he could answer would be nothing but the truth. It's why Subaru just couldn't make sense of the heartless method Roswell chose to approach the whole situation. Exactly. Why would someone as cunning, as careful as Roswell leave the most important shit to a random foreigner kid that's proven to be a fucking idiot in this successful run? Right? Think about what happened transpired at the fucking royal capital during the royal selection. Roswell smiled because Subaru fucked up. We have seen Subaru's incompetency. Roswell's happy about it. Yet he's more than glad to leave it to him. Because he knows that Subaru probably has regression. Because he also has regression and he's using him as a fucking test lab rat. That is the focus of my theory on Roswell since the beginning of season 2. Ever since Annie News talked about how meticulous and careful and strategic he is. And in the back of my mind in season 1 with vehicle lines too, right? About how Roswell's future is secured even if these, lines fa these runs fail. It's just like... There is no chance that Roswell would give a random kid all these... Like, he wouldn't let this happen, just randomly. This is all carefully planned, even though it seems insane. Sure, the end result may have been better than Roswell could have ever imagined. But to put that level of trust into someone who made such a fool of himself the last exactly. time he was just an incomprehensible action. Exactly! If this didn't happen in the successful lines where Roswell witnessed Subaru's only perfectness, then I would say, okay, maybe that makes sense. But we, he has seen Subaru fuck up. And he still gave him the benefit of the doubt. 
So, when Roswell said that he left it in Subaru's hands because he trusted him, intentionally. Subaru was certain that Roswell was joking. No, nah, bro. Despite Roswell saying that he was only going to tell the truth. Interesting that in the anime, his makeup is all off, but here, his eyeliner makeup is still on. Truth. Those words caused for nothing but disbelief. Subaru then wanted to know what it was that Roswell saw that made him be trusted for such an important job. But that was one of the few things that Roswell couldn't mention leading us into the final moments of this heated discussion. Mm, ram. So far, it hadn't been very helpful, but at least Subaru now knew that Amelia was being manipulated by Roswell. Towards the end, Subaru made a statement that I personally feel bears a bit more significance than what we were led to believe. He said that no good death would be waiting for him, to which Roswell simply accepted as if it was a common truth. No good death will be waiting for him. Because he's familiar with regression? He seemed to already be aware of the grim fate that awaited him at the end of his life. Huh! Apparently, it's the reason why he feels the need to spare no effort in trying to achieve his goals within this era. I, I, just more proof that he just willingly throws his life away because regression? A very peculiar choice of words. Now, the conversation didn't actually end there, though. There was one last question that Subaru wanted to ask. One pertaining to Beatrice's words about how all his answers could be found in Sanctuary. Bro, I just realized, we just went to Bieko and asked Bieko for answers and Bieko said fuck off, Roswell has the answers at Sanctuary. We went to Roswell, we asked Roswell, and Roswell says fuck off, go ask Bieko about the question. <laughs> now we're going back. <laughs> if he was just like, this guy has it, this guy has it, I already was at Bieko, what the fuck? And then the interesting thing is, why didn't Roswell include those details in the letter that Frederica had? Because at that time, it wasn't the right time. Right? Roswell could have simply had Subaru get the answers from Biko before we went to the sanctuary through the letter from Frederica's instructions. Yet he didn't. He didn't until he showed up here to get it. Maybe to get him show up and clear the trial and get Emilia stuck in here was his focus. I don't know. But that's interesting because if he truly wanted Super to have all the answers immediately, he could have included it, but he intentionally didn't, meaning there were some other motives most likely to have Emilia show up. But beyond that, I wonder what it is. Since this could be a topic included in a later episode, feel free to skip to the following timestamp. Yeah, I'm going to skip. I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not fucking around with this shit. Nope. 10:20. I'm skipping that shit. In the end, the whole conversation from start to finish was highly ambiguous. It was clear that Roswell had carefully considered how he was going to steer the conversation. Mm. That much was obvious by the fact that he started with the reward of becoming a knight in order to- Like, he already knows that Subaru will become a knight. He's so confident. He is so confident, bro, that Subaru can overcome this and we'll make it out of here, bro. Because to Roswell, Subaru is his ultimate pawn. This kid with the power regression just like me can simply solve all my problems and I can just simply hide in the shadows and orchestrate everything. Like... Oh! A common question that I have is... Who hired Elsa in the beginning? And I always thought cult. But do you think that Roswell intentionally set everything from the beginning? Kind of like Tower of God, like head on and Yu Hansung? Like from the beginning, everything was rigged for Bomb to achieve these feats. Roswell. But he didn't even know who Subaru was. He literally had no idea who Subaru... So what? If the theory is that Roswell hired Elsa, is that he just gambled that someone would show up? Like he was like, mm, okay, I'm a, I, I have power regression and I'm going to fuck around and hire someone to steal Amelia's shit and then Amelia's shining knights will show up and save her. That's a crazy gamble. That's, that's, that's impossible. There is no logic grounded in that. 
This would only make sense if Roswell knew who Subaru was prior to this, right? There is nothing that suggests that Roswell would... Because again, he's a very meticulous person. How would he have known Subaru beforehand? That is a logical inconsistency, so I can't really imagine him hiring Elsa anymore. But if you think about it, in the most recent run of Elsa showing up, why? Right? Why did Elsa show up now? I don't know. I... I can watch. It's safe content. Alright, let's go back to 916 then. It's safe content, apparently. But let's keep that in mind about Elsa and shit. Feel free to skip to the following timestamp. But what Subaru asked specifically was to know the meaning behind Beatrice's words that day. Okay. If he could figure that out, then perhaps he could learn why it was she had such a sad look on her face the last time he saw her. Exactly, it man. Was she was like... Well... My interpretation of this scene was because Betelgeuse is obviously a friend of Beko. Beko is a great spirit. Betelgeuse is an evil spirit. Both spirits. So I'm assuming they were kind of, you know, on friendly terms. I mean, she really, literally calls him Juice. And so now you've left me behind too, implying there's been many people. Kind of like Frieden, where everyone around Frieden dies because she just keeps living on. And Beko is very sad by people are leaving her them one by one and has kind of secluded her heart and hides in the library is my interpretation of what's going on with Biko and the sadness that we see in Memory Snow. That confirmation with Juice being gone and on top of that, Subaru is seemingly just showing up when it's convenient for him to get answers out of her. And then she lashes out saying like, I'm not just a tool for your answers. I thought that's what was going on. Saw her. It was a question to which Roswell responded with a question of his own. Because Subaru had entered the tomb and come out unscathed, Roswell wanted to know if Subaru had met a certain someone while inside. It was a pretty valid question considering that Subaru should have had the same wounds as Roswell. Mm. The only explanation for him I being completely know. fine would be that he had taken the trial. Which means he could have met a certain someone while doing so. That Echidna booty scene here is nice. So I guess Roswell has made the assumption that he, he has been given the qualification by Echidna. Of course, this was something he didn't yet want to tell Roswell though. Especially since he was someone that he could no longer trust. He couldn't even begin to imagine what type of schemes Roswell would conjure had he- Yeah, I have no clue, bro. Like, beyond those eyes are just insane madness. This guy, Roswell might be one of my favorite characters now of the show. He hasn't shown us all his cards yet, but like, and a lot of people say season 2 is boring. Because apparently not many crazy fights happen or whatnot, but like, I think that this is the most fucking- because, like, I've been begging for Roswell content from Season 1. If you see my reactions, I've been, since the beginning of, like, why isn't Roswell here? Where the fuck did he go? How is he leaving Subaru alone in this phase? Arc 2 and 3 as well? What the hell? In Season 2 now, I'm getting all of Roswell and, like, even, even my conspiracy theories are aligning what the, the show is telling me. So it's just peak for me. He known that Subaru had completed one of the trials. As for who Roswell could have been inquiring about, well, Subaru wasn't so sure who it could have been. So, since it wasn't anyone Echidna. that Subaru could specifically remember... Yeah, because the memories are gone, because Echidna didn't really trust Subaru enough when they made the pact, so she erased the memories for her convenience. Her. That meant it wasn't yet time to answer his question relating to Beatrice. So, in the end, the whole conversation from start to finish was highly ambiguous. It was clear that Roswell had carefully considered how he was going to steer the conversation. Yep. That much was obvious by the fact that he started with the reward of becoming a knight in order already to make knows. more favorable. He already knows him. we're going to clear he it. He truly was a very manipulative. Oh, yo, that smile, remember? The smile, this, this scene, right, in the anime was changed from the web novel where Roswell threw Emily under the bus, then attacked Subaru because Subaru got triggered, and then Puck shows up because everything was orchestrated, just highlighting how much of a schemer he is. ...was a very manipulative man. Now, it was after this that Subaru went to go see if Amelia had woken up. When she finally did, Subaru made the mistake of asking her about the trial. He wanted to know what kind of past she saw while doing it. The thing is... This wasn't something Subaru should have knowledge of. What the fuck are we gonna do, bro? Like, there's nothing we can do for her other than be by her side. It is a skill issue moment that we have no control over. All we can do is just be supportive and just exist. Especially since he didn't yet tell anyone that he had completed the trial himself. So, naturally, Amelia wanted to know how he knew the trial was about her past. As much as he wanted to tell her what happened, he knew that her current fragile Packed. mental state wouldn't be able to handle knowing that he had already beat the trial. 
Okay, okay. It would only serve to make her feel more helpless than she already does. Skill issue. Get over it. So, instead, Subaru told Amelia that Roswell was hiding knowledge about the trials. Okay. That, plus the fact that there were two additional ones that needed to be taken after That's the first right. one. That's right. Three trials. In any case. <laughs> right, it's three trials, bro. Amelia can't even get the first trial done. We gotta clear three fucking trials. It's over. It's over, bro. We're staying here until the end of the fucking season. Seeing Amelia show so much anxiety on the topic made him disregard his initial question leading us into the conversations that we saw in the anime. So, now we can fast forward all the way to after Subaru had left Sanctuary. Okay. Because Subaru's Earth Dragon had already memorized the path, Patrash Garcia was able to have this one-on-one -on -one talk with Subaru. Everything that he was saying gave Subaru a new perspective on Amelia's situation. It made Subaru think that perhaps Amelia didn't actually want to do the trial. Absolutely not. What if she didn't want to face her past at all? She doesn't. What if what she truly desired was for someone to step in and rescue her? <sighs> but the goal of this isn't for Subaru to be the White Knight. The goal of this arc is to get Amelia over her past memories and to then lead the people out, right? For her to be a trusted person, to have her reputation go up. If she fails her promise, then that connection with the villagers I don't think is significant. All those subtle cues could have been Amelia's own way of indirectly telling Subaru that she wants to be saved. Subaru wasn't sure yet if that was the case, but if anyone was going to be her salvation, then he felt it had to be him. Mm -hmm. Aside from this, the only topic to their conversation that wasn't shown was when Subaru asked what Garfield wanted to do when he was freed. It was a question that caught Garfield by surprise, as if he'd never been asked something like this before. He doesn't even know, does he? I mean, to does someone who could come and go as they please, this question wouldn't seem too odd. But for someone like Garfield who's been trapped within Sanctuary for who knows how long, it was something that he never really gave thought to. So naturally he didn't have an answer either. Anyway, everything after this was pretty much the same. The only win 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 tao tao vo tran bui nguyen win vo Vietnamese team bro. The Vietnamese team is going crazy for Reezer. I thank them. Oh my god, thank you so much. Only thing they left out from the mansion was the context they gave for Subaru wanting to check up on Rem first. But I'm fairly certain you can deduce why out of the four girls in the mansion, Rem's safety takes top priority. <laughs> Cause Petra's a fucking hoe. Frederica's a dirty beast, man. Biko's gonna be fine. Rem! No, not my Rem! But yeah. That's everything you need to know about episode 5. Now, before I go, I've noticed that quite a few of you have been wanting to know where I get the manga images from. Okay. Well, the short answer is Bookwalk. Ooh, here's the ad! And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please go check out Mr. Annie's channel. Here's the video. Go check out his channel. Sub to his channel if you haven't. And I will see you next time.